Hello to all of you game devs out there. This is episode number 9. We're building a mobile game called Endless Cave and today we're creating the controls to move our player. Before we jump into coding, just a quick heads up guys. There is now a scoreboard in the game, also in the Android version of the game, so you can compare your scores with the other players online. Alright, so let's go into the scenes folder and open the file for our play scene. If you have already played Endless Cave, you know that the player can only move left and right and he changes direction by clicking on the left side or the right side of the screen. So we need a way to track the controls and we also need a way to track which direction the player is currently facing. For this reason we're creating a new object in the play scene with the flags for left and right and with a string for the direction. Now let's scroll to the bottom of the file and create a new section where we can code our controls. Creating controls is a two-step process where we first listen to user input and then we call a specific callback method or a function which deals with the input. In phaser 3 we can use invisible zones to listen for touch input or click input in a certain area. We're gonna use two of these zones, one for the left side of the screen and one for the right side of the screen. So both zones have the same width and height, they're just in a different position. And because these zones are part of the user interface, we have to give them a scroll factor of zero and we have to make sure their depth is correctly set to be on top of everything. And after we've created the player, we're going to create these controls. Okay, so because these zones are invisible, we're going to create a temporary graphics object, which we're gonna call debug, just to visualize what is happening here. So this graphics object has the same position and same width and height as the left zone does. However, we're gonna create it first without the scroll factor and without the depth value. So now when we refresh the browser window, we can see the graphics object, the rectangle, representing the left input zone. And as you can see, it is moving upwards. That's not good for a UI, right? Because that's why we set the scroll factor to zero. It means that no matter how the camera in the game world scrolls, this object stays fixed in this position, which is crucial for the UI and crucial for these input zones. So after we've set the scroll factor to zero, let's refresh again and see what happens. Now the input zone rectangle is still slowly disappearing from the bottom. However, this time it's not scrolling upwards. It's actually the newly drawn floor tiles that are drawn on top of it. So we need to fix this also by setting the correct depth value. We can refresh the browser window a final time. And now you see that this rectangle representing our left input zone, it's exactly where we want it to be. It covers the left half. It doesn't scroll with the game camera. It's drawn on top of everything so now we can start using it to detect user input. We also want to have the same type of input zone on the right side of the screen to move right. So step one was creating two invisible zones that can detect a click or a touch input on mobile phones and now we need these zones to listen to these inputs. We can do this in phaser 3 by calling the set interactive method on the zone and then these zones can listen to very specific inputs with the on method. For example, we have the pointer down method, which means you click down. We have the pointer up, which means you release the mouse or the, the touch input. And we have the pointer out, which means you move out of the zone. And then it's up to us to decide how do we react to these user inputs. For now, let's just log it into the console and make sure that everything works. We can refresh the browser window now and start clicking on the left and the right side of the screen and we will see the correct string logged into the console. No matter how deep we walk into the cave, even in the bottom left corner and bottom right corner, it still detects the input exactly how we want it to. So let's replace these logs with actual callback methods. We start with the hold left callback method. And the first thing we need to do is we have to check 
that currently input is actually allowed meaning that we we check the allow input flag and also we check if the game is paused or if it's already game over because in these cases we don't want the player to be moving left or right and when we hold left we set the left flag to true and we set the current player's direction to left we can copy paste this whole method and use it for the hold right method and just replace the values and the flag for the right side. So basically now we know when the player starts moving left or right, but we also need to handle the situation where he wants to stop moving left or right. For this purpose, we create the release left method. And the first thing this method does is it sets the left flag to false. And then we check if the player is currently holding down the right side because it's th just because he's releasing the left side it doesn't mean he wants to move downwards he could still be moving to the right so we check if the right flag is set to true and update the direction to right if both flags are set to false which means the player released both the left and the right side then we can set the direction to false which means the default direction and this method we can also copy paste it for the right side we rename it to release right and update the values accordingly to the right flag and to the direction. All that's left to do now is we need to tell the zones to use these callback methods depending on the input. When we put, when we click down or hold the finger down, we want to use the, the hold callbacks. And when we release the finger or mouse or we move outside of the input zone, then we, did, we execute the release callback method. All the hard work is done now, guys. All we need to do now is go to the update method in the play scene and we just check which direction the player is currently going. If he's going left, we update his sprite position by going left. And if he's going right, we do the same thing. We move his sprite to the right side. And the very last step is to start the scene properly meaning that when we initialize the scene we set all the flags like the input flags to false but now once the scene is properly started we have to allow player input and we have to tell the game that it doesn't start out with a pause and we're not yet in a game over situation we refresh the browser window one more time and now we can start clicking left we can click right and look at that our player is moving left and he's moving right. Now, right now he's not turning yet. This is what we're going to do next time. But that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really happy you're following the series. Please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And please follow me on Twitter. I post game stuff pretty much every day. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. Or you can jump on my Discord and start chatting with me there. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!